Hi there. Welcome back to your Dolphin World course, Step Into Success. This is Module 2, Owning Your Success. If you have not yet completed Module 1, Defining Your Success, please go back and do that before continuing with Module 2. After all, it is not possible to own your success before you have defined your success. I hope that you have a clearly focused picture of your success in your mind made distinct and definite by having written it down. Every tool, every new bit of technology, every invention, every cathedral, and every success story was first created in the mind or imagination of a human being before it became a tangible thing in the external world. So let's take a look at the building blocks of your success. You began the process of making your success story into a manifest reality when you defined your success in the previous module. You created the ideal. Now the next step is to own it. Everything in the process of conscious creation moves from the realm of the ideal into the realm of the virtual prior to it becoming realized or effectual. That is to say, moves into the realm of the real. So, your next steps are, first, to form the confident expectation that your goals will come to fruition. Second, to see them, to visualize them as being accomplished. Third, to constantly affirm their reality. And fourth, to instill in your mind the grateful appreciation of their existence. Building block number one, confident expectation. In case you did not know this yet, life delivers pretty much what you expect it will. If you want to have success in your life, you must train yourself to expect success. <clears throat> Excuse me. The English word expect is actually a contraction of two Latin roots, ex and spect. X as in exit, and spect as in spectator or spectacle. X means out, and spect means picture. So the literal meaning of the word expect is to out picture. When you look at the world, you do not perceive all of what is actually there. You see what your mind expects to see. And what does your mind expect to see? What it has been trained to see. The world, as you see and experience it, is just your personal, internal reality picture, outpictured or expected. Your reality is first preconceived or visualized inside your mind. Your mind then projects that internal really image, that internal image, onto the world, and that internal picture thus becomes your external reality. What you have in life is based upon your expectations. Your expectations, in turn, are built upon your beliefs, what you believe you could have or what you believe you should have, or what you believe you deserve to have. Where did you get those beliefs about your possibilities, potentials, limitations, and deservingness? Mostly, you inherit them. You just take them on, assume them, without examining them for veracity or usefulness. If you ask most people, why do you believe such and such? Most will answer, because it is true. 
No matter what rationalizations or intellectual convolutions are brought to bear to attempt to prove how or why something they believe is true, in the end, it is really no different than the childish refrain, why? Because people generally do not know the genesis of their beliefs. That is, they do not know how and why they came to hold those beliefs. And, critically, they have not ever asked themselves if those beliefs serve them in any way to create success in their life. So take a moment and check in with yourself to ask these simple questions. Do you truly believe it is possible for you to achieve a large degree of success? Do you believe that you deserve to have a large degree of success? Do you believe that the world is set up to support your success? Do you believe that success is your birthright? Or is it something to be earned? Now, ask yourself, why do I hold those beliefs? How did I come to have them? Do those beliefs serve me in any way? How? What personal expectations do I have that have come out of those beliefs? Tough questions, but worth asking. From the moment we arrive in this world, we are trained to expect certain things or trained to expect for things to be a certain way. Our culture, our personal experiences, our parents, our education, our peers all serve to train us to have certain expectations in life. And for the most part, these expectations are self-fulfilling prophecies. We expect something, it shows up, we then say, see, it was true. We do not even consider the possibility that it is only true for us because we first believed it to be true and then expected it to be the way things are. We ignore the fact that if we had held different beliefs and expectations, the truth would prove to be different. Now, you might say in response to my statements above, I did not expect my life to turn out this way, or I did not expect the world to be this way. It just is the way it is. And to which I will reply, so, what exactly were you expecting? If you have asked yourself the questions about your beliefs I have just suggested, I think you will see that you have pretty much the results that you were expecting to have, and that if you critically and honestly examine your core beliefs, you will understand why you were expecting exactly what you have. So, let me affirm, if you desire to have a meaningful and measurable amount of success in life, you are going to have to train your mind to expect success. Not hope for, not wish for, not even just plan for, but fully expect success. To do that training, you are going to need... You, <coughs> excuse me. To do that training, you are going to need to provide new information to your mind so that it can be convinced to take on different beliefs. You will need to undertake a program to consciously brainwash yourself. I ask you to seriously consider the idea that your mostly unconscious expectations are the way your subconscious visualizes your world and your results. It may be necessary for you to do the work to override 
those deeply held beliefs, suppositions, and expectations. Remember that expect means to outpicture. Fortunately, there is a way to do that, to train your mind to have the confident expectation that your success will come to pass. First, you must begin the habit of substituting conscious and intentional visualization for the unconscious visualization that is taking place. One of my favorite writers is a guy by the name of Mark Twain. He once wrote, you can't depend on your eyes when your imagination is out of focus. So how do you use conscious visualization to override the unconscious pre-programmed visualizations? How do you use that creative workshop of your imagination to reprogram your mind? One of the most popular and proven ways is to create a vision board or a dream book. So allow me to tell you a personal story. Back in March of 1995, my partner at the time, Sandra, and I decided to create our personal and shared dream books. So we went out and bought school exercise books. You know, those multi-subject, eight and a half by 11, ring spiral bound exercise books. Okay. We then took them and divided them into sections financial and business being one section, travel and adventure being another one, for example. Our relationship, of course, mattered, so that was a primary uh, section of our books. Spiritual ideals, many different areas of our life that we had ideals that we wanted to create for ourselves. We sexualized, sectionalized <laughs> these books, okay, created departments, if you will, in each of these books for each of the areas in our life. And then we went out and we collected a whole bunch of magazines. We got some colored markers. We even bought tubes of glitter um, and a bunch of quotes that we liked. And then we started creating our dream books, okay? Pasting pictures, writing down things with colored markers, putting sparkles on it, doing all of this wonderful stuff. We took a whole month to do this, okay? And then once a week over the next several months, we reviewed these, sat down and reviewed them. It was a lot of fun. It really was. It was childish, perhaps. It was playful. It was all of that. But it was a great thing to do. It was a lot of fun. And then in September of that year, we packed up all of our stuff into boxes, packed a couple of suitcases, moved to California to start Delphin. Put all of the boxes of stuff that we, including those dream books, into my brother's basement. Five years later, we came back to Canada for a couple of months. We unpacked those boxes to find our vision books. And lo and behold, upon reviewing those vision books, which was a lot of fun to go back and see all the things we'd written down, we found out 90% of those things that we had written down that we wanted to create had come true. In five years, 90% had come true. And guess what? Many other people over the years have reported to me the same results. And they usually say, I wish I had imagined bigger and bolder. So build that vision board or dream book and dare to dream big. My next recommendation is to practice alpha state visualization. In the everyday, ordinary waking state of consciousness, your mind is quite active and produces the beta state of neural activity. In contemplative or shallow meditative states, 
your calmer mind produces the alpha brainwave state. Without going into the whole long discussion about the details and intricacies of these states of mind and the resulting measurable brainwave activity, let's just say that when you are in alpha, it is easier to focus your attention and your intention, and as a consequence, you are able to consciously direct your creativity. It is therefore easier to create and reinforce new neural pathways in your brain. In other words, in alpha, you can overwrite old, non-productive programs with new, desired programs. Creating, reinforcing, and imprinting desirable mental pictures while you are in the alpha state is therefore a very effective way to reprogram the subconscious and to create those new neural pathways. Back in the day, half a century ago, when I first learned meditation, a person was required to practice a fair amount of daily discipline over a substantive period of time in order to achieve even a moderate ability to get the alpha brainwave state that reflected a focused and calm mind. These days, with relatively recent understanding that specific sound vibrations can induce an alpha state in most people in a matter of minutes, there is no excuse for anyone to say that they do not have the time or discipline to meditate. They may not have the desire or the will, but they cannot ever pretend that it is too difficult or not worth the effort. All you have to do is log into YouTube and you will find scores of carefully crafted examples of videos designed to put you into a meditative state. Simply search for binaural beats or solfeggio solfeggio sounds. So I'll spell that for you. S-O-L-F-E-G-G-I-O. Okay. Once you are in that mild meditative or semi-trance state, you need to visualize your success. Start by reviewing your vision board or dream book in order to stimulate those mental images in order to get to the place where you can, with your eyes closed, create a movie of your successful life to see it play out in your imagination. If you do that often enough, it will become that confident expectation that will outpicture into your reality picture. If you have any real passion for the success story you have created for yourself, this internal movie that you are writing, are directing, and are playing the starring role in will be much more entertaining than any of that crap you habitually watch on TV and even better than the Oscar-winning movie of the year. I would also suggest that you read a book entitled Creative Visualization by Shakti Gawain. Sandra and I had both read this book prior to creating our personal dream books, vision boards. Okay, enough about visualization. Let's talk about affirmations. When I say the word affirmation, you might think of positive thoughts written down on post-it notes and stuck to your bathroom mirror or fridge door or some motivational phrases repeated to yourself at odd times throughout the day whenever you remember. Yes, those can be called affirmations, but they are the most insignificant form of affirmations. Every thought you think consciously or not, is affirmation. And perhaps you have not paid attention 
But if you do, you will notice that you talk to yourself all day, every day, until and unless you start paying attention to that self-talk, it mostly occurs in the background without your notice. And sadly, although much of it is just subconscious drivel, old commercials, random tunes, with no particular purpose or value, much of it is actually quite detrimental to your ability to consciously choose and create your future. It is pretty hard to write the script of your success story when your editor is the monkey mind constantly overwriting your story with useless drivel or negative old programming. The majority of that conversation you are having with yourself, although most of it occurs beneath your conscious awareness, is how you describe reality to yourself. Let me say that again. Your self-talk is you describing reality to yourself moment by moment. You are quite likely mostly unaware of what you're telling yourself. It is relegated to your unconscious conversation with self. So, how could a few positive affirmations repeated infrequently possibly supplant those 60,000 thoughts per day that run through your mind? I am not suggesting here that those consciously chosen positive affirmations pasted to your bathroom mirror are not useful. Over time, they too will become part of your internal conversation. However, unless you take control of that tape loop that runs constantly in the background, you will be struggling. If those little post-it notes are only a minor part of that internal conversation and they are in conflict with the rest of what streams constantly through your mind, they will not have much effect on your essential beliefs about your life and the potential you have to self-actuate. So, how do you take control of that endless background chatter? First, start paying attention to what you are thinking. Second, learn to ask yourself throughout each day, why am I thinking that? Does it serve me to hold that thought? And then, start intentionally replacing any negative or non-supportive thoughts with those positive affirmations. Okay, I'm going to suggest another book here for you. It is called What to Say When You Talk to Yourself by a guy by the name of Shad Helmstetter. Okay, that is your waking time taken care of. Affirmation, visualization. You know this, but allow me to remind you. When you are asleep, your conscious mind is on pause, and your subconscious mind is not. It is quite active. It continues to run on autopilot, replaying previous programming, unless you tell it what to do while you are sleeping. This is where you get to use gratitude to trick or train your subconscious to do the heavy lifting of reprogramming that background self-talk for you while you sleep. Gratefulness brings a great fullness to life. The choice to adopt and hold a moment-by-moment -moment attitude of gratitude is the choice that differentiates those who suffer the slings and arrows of misfortune and those who are blessed with a joyous and abundant life. Yes, that is correct. It is not the actual events and circumstances that occur during one's journey through life that determine whether or not a person is happy and prosperous. It is the conscious and willful choice to be grateful for all the bounty that life has to offer and to be grateful for the opportunity to participate in 
and contribute to the experience of life which enables and empowers any individual, regardless of circumstance, to have a fulfilling life. Like everything else, on the path to mastery, gratitude is a choice. You can choose to wait for some meaningful, pleasant situation to arise and then feel gratitude in response, or you can choose to be grateful at all times, in all circumstances, and watch as the world conspires to assist you in your path. If you are grateful for what you already have, the world will conspire to give you more to be grateful for. If you are resentful of what you already have, the world will conspire to give you more to resent. You attract how you are being. Moreover, the true master learns to be grateful in advance for the things that are idealized and desired. Why? Because being grateful in advance for some attainment or accomplishment does two very important things. One, it tricks your subconscious mind into believing that the goal is certain. And two, it convinces other people with whom you must interact to achieve your desires that you know what you are about, that you are a winner. When your subconscious is convinced that the goal is certain because you are already grateful for having it, it will provide the ways and means of fulfilling or achieving that goal. Since your subconscious is connected to the great collective subconscious of humanity, it also informs this morphic field of your profound intent. And the result is that the people, resources, and conditions for fulfillment show up in your life. All this happens because you chose to be grateful in advance of the having this. The act of being grateful in advance is proof of your faith and belief in the actuality, eventuality, and realness of the manifestation of your desired ideal. And when other people are convinced that you are convinced, of the realness of your goals, they will rally around you and provide both physical and metaphysical support for you and your goals. The benefits of the physical support, that is to say, the investment of time, effort, and money to support you and your goals are obvious. What may not be obvious to those unfamiliar with the laws of the universe is that the metaphysical support is even more crucial. The added belief of others in you and your goals brings an aura of success about you, and that creates, in turn, even more support for you. <clears throat> the knowledge that all things, existent and potential, are at their pure essence a myriad of interlocking and interwoven vibrations of pure energy and that the emanations of your consciousness and the emanations of the other individual conscious minds of the people who associate with you interfere with and interact with these pre-existing vibrations to create new patterns that result in the manifestation of actualities is what denotes wisdom and mastery. Let me say that again. The knowledge that all things, existent and potential, are at their essence a myriad of interlocking vibrations of pure energy and that the emanations of your consciousness and the emanations 
of the consciousness of the people around you, associated with you, interfere with these pre-existing vibrations to create new patterns that will result in the manifestation of actualities is what denotes wisdom and mastery. All this and more happens when you choose to hold and to express gratefulness for what you have and what you claim or expect to have as you journey through life. Begin each day with an expression of your gratitude for all the blessings that life has bestowed upon you, and your day will be filled with even more and greater blessings. And each day, just before you go to sleep, combining the envisioning of your success with an expression of gratitude for the owning of that success, your subconscious will spend all night processing that gratitude and incorporating it into your tape loop of self-talk. It will constantly affirm your success. The choice is yours. Every breath you breathe can be an expression of gratitude. And existing in a state of gratefulness is very alike existing in a state of grace. Being grateful denotes your knowledge of and application of one of the most important aspects of creation. Who you are and how you are produces what you have. And of course, grateful appreciation makes what you have all that much more enjoyable. So, Okay, here we are at the end of Module 2. Time for the application reminders. You have written down your definition of success. Start reading it to yourself at least three times a day, preferably out loud. Commit to creating that vision board or dream book and get it done as soon as possible. And then... Set aside 20 minutes each day to get yourself into the alpha state and use your dream book to help you visualize that success movie, your starring role. And of course, begin each day immediately upon awakening with an expression of gratitude for all the blessings you have in your life and end each day with an expression of gratitude for the success you are in the process of creating. Okay, thanks for being you and thanks for being here. See you again in Module 3. Ciao for now.